Welcome back to Squawk Box, everybody. As we near the end of the year, 243 companies in the S&P 500 have boards that are made up of at least 35 percent women. That is clearly a rising tide, but it's also one that has a ways to go. Joining us right now are two veteran CEOs honoring growing diversity in corporate boardrooms. Ken Frazier is Merck's executive chairman. And Maggie Wilderotter is the former CEO of Frontier Communications. And, and welcome to both of you. It's really great to see you two here today. I, I, Ken and Maggie, I know that you two are co-chairs of the Women's Forum of New York Breakfast of Champions this week. And, and there you are honoring S&P 500 companies that have at least 35 percent board seats that are held by women. Um, Maggie, let's start with you. How, how difficult was it to find companies that fit that description? Well, you know, it's getting better, Becky. It's been getting better every year for the last 10 years we've been doing this. And I think it's great that we do have 35% or more women on S&P 500 and FTSE 1000 boards. But we still have a ways to go. And I, I think it's exciting that we're able to continue to honor more and more companies that are not just saying it, but are actually doing it. You say we have a ways to go, but but people are starting to make changes. Would you say that this is different than maybe what we've seen over the last decade? How, how much more seriously are, are companies taking it at this point? It's a lot more serious. Ten years ago, in 2011, when we had our first breakfast, we had 16 percent of companies that, that was six percentage points higher than 15 years prior to that. Now we're uh, really uh, aggressively moving forward with getting over 35% in that 10-year window. But if you think about 2025 and we look out, we can get to parity if only 50% of every board opening in an S&P 500 company in the United States put a woman into that slot. Hey, Kim, let's, let's follow up a little bit with a, another initiative that you are co-chairing, and that's the 110 initiative, to try and make sure that you can connect a million black Americans into corporate America. How are things going on that front? How, how is that progress uh, being, being made? So thanks, Becky. I think these two issues are very much related. It has to do with accessibility and mindset and how do we actually fully employ all the talent in this country. So we have gotten this thing off to a very good start. From a standing start, we have now hired nearly 20,000 African Americans without four-year degrees uh, into the 60 or so companies that are now our sponsors. And I think, frankly, if we want to put this country back to work after the pandemic, if we want to increase our GDP, I think we really do have to open up our portals as a company and hire people who have the skills, the attitude, and the aptitude. Uh, Four-year degrees are great, but not everyone has them. F nearly four out of five African Americans don't have a four-year degree, and two out of three Americans overall lack a four-year degree. So I think we want to move from a credentials-based hiring system to a skills-based hiring system. Ken, this is happening at a time when we are facing a severe shortage of workers. Just about every industry is scrambling to try and find people. Uh, is this a message that you think resonates well because people want to do this and want to do well? Or is this also something that kind of falls into happenstance at this point where people are pretty desperate to look for workers where maybe they haven't looked in the past? I think it's both, but I think there's a real need. There are about 10 million open jobs in this country yeah. right now, and many of them only require people who are trained specifically to do those skills. And I think if we don't move into this area as a country, we're going to be spending a lot of money propping up people who can't work while we have all of these openings. Makes no sense. Let's talk a little bit about what we have seen in terms of those workers who, who haven't come back. Um, Steve Leisman did a report for us earlier this morning and just showed that people without children have come back almost at 100 percent, maybe even a little bit more than they were pre-pandemic. It's the people who have children, spe specifically those who have children who are ages zero to five, Maggie, who have not come back in the same force. They're down by about 7 percent from where we were pre-pandemic. What can corporations do? What should leaders and CEOs be doing at this point to try and help uh, bring those workers back into the workplace? Well, I know I sit on a number of corporate boards today, Becky, and it's in, it's in the boardroom as well. We're talking about how do we take great care of our employees. A lot of employees have been stressed over these last couple of years. It's not just taking care of children. It's also taking care of elders in their family. And you're seeing some really creative ways that companies are implementing programs to actually help mothers and to help uh, spouses because it really works both ways in terms of the workforce. Sometimes it's the woman that gets affected, but the men get affected too. And I think what we wanna do is increase benefits 
and have them more specialized based upon the needs of individuals.